Hello, welcome to Evolve Pipe Drive Podcast, which are all things pipe drive, sales, apps, and pipe drive marketplace. My name is Bruce Bignall. I run Evolve, a technology consultancy based in the UK, working globally, helping people get more from pipe drive and the wider tech stack through implementation, consultancy, training, and aftercare. We recently launched our sales Evolve Sales OS. It's a small list of curated apps that are help, uh, designed to help you sell more. And we've put together four hours worth of content from experts at Pipedrive, Surf, Just Play, and Outcall. But today, though, I have the pleasure of being joined by Marcel Seibold, the Chief Product Officer at Demodesk. Demodesk is a platform that transforms sales meetings and allows you to coach sellers in real time, automate manual workflows, and provides insights at scale using AI. And it also connects to your CRM too. Now, I'm really excited to be talking to Marcel today for a couple of reasons. One, because Marcel is a serial entrepreneur, having co-founded multiple businesses like BES Interactive and Minerix. And two, because he's an experienced salesperson. Having worked at IBM and Salonis in Germany, he has now made to move into product. So I'm sure some of his real world frontline experience has impacted some of his design philosophy when it comes to the product. So without further ado, welcome Marcel. Please can you introduce yourself and demo desk to our audience. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, it's a it's a pleasure. Uh, great introduction. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, so name is Marcel. Um, I'm responsible for the product at Demodesk. Um, been at the company since um, 2020. So right when uh, Corona hit, so my onboarding was in San Francisco, and afterwards everything happened online. So that was quite oh, yeah. quite a difference. Um, but also a very exciting time because um, I mean we are in the sales space. We are also a product that always works with remote tools. Um, so I think that's where a lot of um, developments have happened um, in that time frame. So I think that was also quite quite exciting. And yeah, I'm located in Germany, as mentioned, and um, in Munich. And when it's about introducing Demodesk, I think I would like to start with the vision. So our vision with Demodesk is always about um, making everyone a top performer in sales. So that's what we aim to achieve. Um, and how we are trying to do that is making sure, number one, that we help sales teams to always focus on what matters and that is selling and doing less of what is not as important, which in most cases is administrative um, tasks. So they are important, but at the same time, um, it, there, are technolo there is technology and there's a way to um, decrease the effort there and the time spent on it. And then secondly, making sure everybody gets the coaching they need to find their individual um, top performance, which then will bubble up and make whole sales organizations um, improve and perform on a whole different level. Yeah, so you said there about the leveling up and kind of the coaching aspect. Like, So we, I'm sure we'll touch upon this a little bit more, but the from a coaching element, for SM, you're focused on kind of SMEs and scale ups, right? So, um, historically, you may an SME or a scale up may not have had the resources to coach their sales team because it, you'd have to bring in a consultant to listen to listen to calls or sit on the sit on the sales floor and actually kind of do some training. But what, as a software, as a as a platform, now if you want to level up. The, the sales team you've got your high performers who always look after themselves but actually how, how do you raise the, the the floor of your sales team this is i think the coaching element is quite interesting here right so what what is the platform able to do that you couldn't necessarily do before because i think this kind of democratizing coaching in an element in, to a sense right so it's what used to be um for the larger businesses you can now get it quite accessibly for, for a small business. Do you see it like that, kind of democratizing coaching? Like, and, and how, how, how was that? Um, yeah, how, how, how are you guys approaching that? And do you see it as kind of democratizing um, coaching? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, uh, it's, a, it's a perfect phrasing. Uh, don't be angry, Bruce, if it finds its way on our website <laughs> at some point. <laughs> you can take it as well. So, yeah, that's absolutely true. And I think 
that's also somewhat the differences. If I remember times when I worked um, in my in my own startups doing sales, um, where you also try to get help from the outside, uh, having different salespeople work for you and um, trying to pitch your product. Sales coaching is not really happening there. It's more like in between meetings where you maybe share a bit about product knowledge, but there's not really a lot of coaching happening. And then if I compare it with IBM, obviously enterprise, um, huge organization, uh, with a long uh, track record also in sales excellence where there are um, structured uh, trainings in person that every salesperson um, gets. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's a completely different game. So now with SMBs, I think that's also what we see. Like every organization knows um, sales coaching is helpful because to us, sales, yes, it's always a bit treated like an art. So if we think about Wolf of Wall Street, it's a bit, you know, like you want this uh, shiny uh, salesperson just going in and um, making tremendous results. But um, there's also the craft piece involved, um, which we believe um, is the part that sales coaching should focus on. So getting also the basics right um, and also having this continuous process of improving and that's where um, the sales coaching puts in. So um, after every meeting as an individual salesperson, I get from the AI coach feedback on what went well and what I can improve. And that is, like you said, um, democratizing um, um, sales coaching because it will help me find my individual best performance. And that's what it is about. And that's where I think we can uh, raise the floor, um, like you said, um, to just improve the overall um, and performance because it's not always about just copy and pasting what the top performing sales rep does because in most cases it's what works for him and he found it but others yeah. might still be seeking on finding these specific moments that will help them to find their own um, top performance and that's yeah what we are looking into and that's also what what we're working on on trying to achieve and make available for everyone so, so when you say everyone there uh, where, where is everyone are, are you kind of focused in the European market? Do you focus on um, English speaking? Like what, are the, what are the markets and in industries that you guys cover? Mm -hmm. So we focus on inside sales teams in the European Union and in the US um, and mostly organizations that do most of their um, selling online because that's where we can help the most. Mm -hmm. So inside sales, um, I would describe that and correct me if I'm wrong, Basically, if you're selling from a desk, right, you're not doing field sales, you're not necessarily maybe doing so many in-person meetings. Um, so EU and the US. Um, so are there different languages within the platform? So, so how, how is that handled? Yeah, absolutely. So as a, as a startup that works in the European Union, very early on, you will be uh, met with a lot of different languages. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, so that's something that we have a, have a focus on. So we support um, all the languages that um, are in the European Union, um, mostly known um, things like French, German, um, also Dutch, for example. Um, and I think also that's a difference to other um, products and providers that mostly focus on, on English and might struggle um, in, in these languages. Hmm. And, and from a, if, if the inside sales for EU and US, are, are there, um, who'd be your ICP? Like how would people find you? Would it be an individual sales rep that's looking to better themselves that just Give, gives you uh, does, gives demo desk a trial, or is it the sales manager or business owner that wants to put demo desk into your tech stack? How, how does that come about? So I think it really depends a bit on the on the use case. Um, so with demo desk, uh, we have um, the meeting product, the scheduling product, and the coaching and the AI product. Um, and I think in most cases, it's for sure the sales manager, the sales leaders that uh, need to find ways to automate um, their their teams in a sense of how can we get um, world-class processes set up. And then the most important part, how can we actually make sure that they are also being executed that way? Because if it's just a Notion file uh, hidden somewhere or some PowerPoint slide, um, that will not happen um, just like that. And that's where these free products from DemoDesk um, will support. And then oftentimes also sales enablement or sales operations managers um, that get in touch with us. But yeah, I mean, with the DemoDesk sales coaching product, I mean, we want to make individual sales reps better. That is our vision. That is our goal. 
So we would love to talk to more individual sales reps. So if they're out there somewhere and they're hearing this, uh, so feel free to reach out to us, try out the product. And we are more than happy to talk to you. And, and for, on the individual sales reps or, or the kind of anyone that's using um, a larger team, you, you mentioned about the kind of leveling up and the, the sales coaching. So that, are there um, frameworks that you've, you guys have put into the platform that are kind of best in class? Um, and then can they be, would a, a team member customize that to, to their industry? Like, h- How does that work? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I think that's that's quite the important piece because in most cases, what does even um, best practice or like what is even a top performance? How can we yeah. even define that? And I think in most cases, what we've seen with sales frameworks like Spiced or Medic, and there are ways where we can say for every sales organization that these are the basics that a sales team should look out for um, to have a good performance. But then it's always about adding also your own knowledge about the product, about the market, also about what sets you apart um, to be able to get the best results. And that's also how we from the product side support that. So we provide out of the box um, best sales frameworks um, that just work. Um, and then that is the stepping stone to step by step then um, improve them and make them your own by adding your um, specifics. So what is it in your organization that your team should look out for and what do you already know will always work? And I think that's also quite the interesting piece. What happens from like founder led sales then to more like the team selling where some of these golden nuggets that just work, they get lost a bit. Um, and that's a way to just make sure that doesn't get lost and people are still doing that. Yeah, that, that's quite a big piece, right? So certainly from a coaching element, or even just running a sales meeting, right? So but if, if you're, that's such a nice use case from a founder-led sales to a team of five to a team of 25, like that there are, there are different rules that you're playing by. And I, I thought that was a really nice use case when you mentioned Yes, you, we may have a process, but we've got it in a Notion document somewhere or someone, someone's put it down somewhere. Um, but we've actually got new products, we're in new markets and we've got a brand new website. So maybe those pains and they don't match anymore. So it should be an evolving document, you know, your, your sales story that you that you work to. Um, but I think there's something there where what, what you're now able to do in, in these sales meetings because they're recorded they can be you can see the gaps very quickly if you haven't asked this question if it's not then auto populating your crm because your meeting um, demo desk in the meeting is looking for those questions if you haven't said that question that golden nugget question you would be able to tell very quickly shit up maybe i need to get back in touch with them to say actually how many users are you looking to, <laughs> um, to, to have or whatever else, right? So um, I, how do you see that as a, how often would you recommend kind of updating your, when you said about the uh, the golden nuggets or moving from founder led sales to um, the kind of a, a bigger team and using a, a tool like this, how often would you recommend looking at the data and maybe making amends or making tweaks? That's a very, very good question. I think I would probably answer it first thinking about the individual sales rep. So I think as an individual sales rep, ideally every every customer interaction, I think there should be somewhat of a moment just for a quick um, retro to understand what has happened, uh, did the meeting went, how I expected it to go, because those yeah. will be the learnings. And yes, there are meetings that go super well, and which is a moment to also celebrate oneself. But there's also meetings that just don't go as planned. And then even then, like taking a moment, but then looking into what has happened, were there any wrong hypotheses, assumptions that led to that meeting, maybe not giving that that outcome. I think that is so, so helpful. So in a sense, it's like this personal sales playbook what does one person uh, make better than the other and that's also i think where just these recordings these insights will help so much and also this just general feedback that you get from the ai coach just this different opinion 
that will look at your conversation and maybe make you aware of certain things that um, you might not be aware of. And then on the on the team um, perspective, I think, like you mentioned, there are so many new insights now where before we had to spend probably just a quarter getting all the data into one place to talk to customers, get marketing involved, get everybody basically of the organization involved to figure out what is actually happening out there. How should we talk to our customers? What are their challenges? And all of this is constantly evolving in this um, hyperspeed world we live in. So now with these recordings, with these insights, I think it's quite important to just have these weekly uh, meetings obviously to share learnings and insights which are now super accessible through the recordings and um, also making your team aware to just share when they themselves notice something that works and um, i think that is the first step opening up the conversation and then also on a on a quarterly basis with most co companies and organizations we've seen that just a quick check in the quarter are these assumptions, is the storyline that we have here, is that still true? Did we learn anything new? Do we want to um, adapt something? I think that's that's quite a helpful exercise, but it also obviously depends on the organization themselves and the sales process. But that is something that we've seen with our customers that uh, helps quite a bit. Hmm. How have sales meetings changed so over the last 10 years or so? Yeah, uh, a lot. <laughs> they have changed a lot. So I think um, when uh, when I did sales, for example, at um, IBM, I think the, as initially mentioned, so there's always trainings um, that get you set up. They are in a in a meeting. They're in a room um, where they happen. Um, also, a lot of the conversations were over the phone, um, which was also quite interesting because then sometimes you have ten people in a phone conference. You don't even know is everybody still there because is everybody's the muted. With the uh, the conference, it'd be like a little yeah phone in the middle of the desk, right? And you have a conference call. So yeah, exactly, exactly. And it makes it hard, right? Because you don't. I mean, you're fishing in the dark in a sense. Because in a conversation face to face, I mean, you still get the the emotions. You understand: is everybody there? Am I losing? Also, maybe someone. And um, and this has, uh, I think. Uh, improved dramatically so also i think since 2020 um, now online meetings becoming more like the standard um, it's it is the expectation which i think is also great because compared to the phone or always driving to the customer and um, i think it's the most efficient and still gives you this personal touch of actually seeing everyone and being able to adapt your your sales storyline and at Celonis, for example, um, which did a lot of field sales um, back in the day, there was always a joke that um, there should be RVs provided by the company because you're just doing road trips throughout um, Germany back then um, to talk to all these customers. And um, in most cases, it was yeah, um, initial conversations that were happening there, which nowadays you would just do online and uh, yeah. not uh, do a road trip about. Yeah, I, I think... I mean, a, a branded RV would, would be quite fun um, on, on the road. But um, yeah, I think I, I feel like I was talking to someone the other day and feel like we're, we're ha I don't know the data behind this, but it feels like we're having more sales meetings than ever. Um, they're obviously now all recorded or mo most of them are recorded. That feels, recording was like version one of this, right? So now we've got, Yes, it's recorded. That's great. Then you have the level of transcription, which was another kind of cool thing that you could have from video recordings. But now with AI and, and what technology like platforms like Demo Desk is allowing you to do is actually have some insights from that, right? So not just as an individual rep, but as a team. Um, so it's not so much the writing of content, it's the reading of big data and then summarizing it into a framework and even asking the meeting post meeting asking what did i say i would send this person <laughs> and then it would just tell you absolutely um, which is like the, it's it's such a good use case um how what's the level of and what what feedback are you get when you speak to customers so i guess as a salesperson um two things one as a salesperson now in product how do you get your feedback? Are you talking to customers? Are you talking to the um, your sales team to get kind of get feedback there? And then on that, after the second part of that question is, 
how is the level of what what is changing from a salesperson's level of expectations beforehand they just wanted okay can we have this meeting recorded from an expectation of what's you know from everyone knows about ai and kind of sales technology so one how are you getting your feedback in real time yourself as a product owner and then how on the front line of sales people what's the level of expectation how is it changing Absolutely. Uh, great, great questions. So, if, uh, I mean, for product, it's always the, the key point to talk to your, your customers. So, I mean, there are different channels through um, support channels, through email. But I think the most exciting one is always talking directly to the customer because you can just um, use also these sales skills, asking the right questions, digging deeper, understanding um, what is the context or the impact of a certain solution they might propose or a certain um, challenge um, they are mentioning because that's what we've seen in the past uh, also in regards to integrating with pipedrive for example i mean sometimes there's also challenges more on the setup side of the customer um, mm. where they would benefit for just going for a simpler solution and then we can sometimes also just share what what we've seen what we notice what works and um, so it's always uh, i think quite a rewarding um, exchange and if i'm not in the conversation then i am I mean, we record all our customer uh, customer conversations in demo desk, so I can always just read up on what has happened in the conversation um, in the summary in demo desk, and then I can also ask some very specific questions from a product perspective. Um, ask the AI if that was a topic um, in that conversation, which just saves me time because then I can just understand what was what was it that was discussed, and then if I want to, I can still jump into these specific moments. So for me, that is an absolute game changer. And I think that's also what you mentioned for an individual sales rep, how that um, is different nowadays. So I think working with AI, um, I mean, we're getting there. Like I think most, most salespeople have an experience with it. And I think now we're talking about quality and also the user experience um, just to make it as easy as possible. And at the same time, giving very high quality and consistent results, because I think everyone nowadays has seen AI also providing or producing this stuff, data, insights, it might not make sense. And that's mm -hmm. something um, where we see the expectation. So just making sure the AI is top notch and gives you the best summaries in the market and gives you these actionable insights that actually make you better and just doesn't um, read nice. Yes, and uh, that's probably the most impactful way now AI is going to impact a sales individual sales rep and then the business owner as well, right? So, um, I mean, how how is that impacting how your like the future roadmap for you guys? So, so, is that do you go all in on AI? Do you go all in usability? Do you go all in on new languages? Like, where where do you focus? Because obviously, from an AI standpoint, there's not so much there's not as good data in non English speaking languages. So. How do you handle that from a, a transcription and summary? Is that an issue for you guys? Like, what are the kind of limits there that um, that you might be facing? Mm -hmm. So languages like German, French, Dutch, they work very well um, with, with the models. So that's always a focus for us, just tweaking on that and working around these limitations that exist. And so far, we've seen very, very nice results. And can just uh, tell everyone to try it out themselves uh, so they will, they will notice yeah. it uh, right away. And that's also the focus for us, um, using these AI capabilities that we've built now and just going deeper there, um, increasing the quality and also quality in the sense of the insights. So what am I getting out of it? So it's not about just producing a summary. It's about mm -hmm. producing a summary that for the individual sales rep actually adds value. And how does it do that? If it provides you with this very structured information um, from the transcript so that I don't have to look at the recording, I always have that information available and also then sent to the CRM. So whenever, whenever I'm wondering what was the price we discussed or what was the budget that they mentioned, they can just super easily and quickly get that information. And then with the AI coach, it's also about, um, yeah, making sure that also every organization has the possibility to adapt it to their use case, to make that as easy as possible. And that's where I think the two topics of AI and user experience, um, where they meet, because 
Um, AI can get also quite complex. If you don't get the results you expect or you want to, then it can get a, become a rabbit hole. And that's something where we provide value by making sure we take over that for you and give you the um, value right away without any bigger setup effort needed. We're talking about setup efforts and, and um, how does Demo Desk connect to Pipedrive? Is it is it native? Is it a really complex integration? So how 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 can people connect the two together? So the first answer it's basically two clicks. I think uh, clicking on the marketplace and then uh, connecting the account, and then from that moment on, all the meeting summaries will be sent to Pipedrive. And then for all the sales operations and um, expert at heart, we also have the possibility to control it more on a granular level. So really deciding which field should be filled um, in Pipedrive. Um, is it the activity object? Is it the uh, person or, or deal object? And then also any field um, on, on that. So there we also provide the option to yeah just uh, make it really your own. And why is that important? Because as mentioned initially, the process should be lived and executed the right way because that's why it was set up. And doing that together with the CM, CRM and working with Pipedrive together there, and we can make sure that is happening. And we make sure that it's happening also on scale. So no matter if it's 5, 10, or 20 people, it should always work. Um, and that's why we need to integrate us more deeply there. Nice. I, I think the... Um... There's some really nice updates to Pipedrive recently, uh, the grouping of custom fields again, you know, against objects like people or deals. Um, and I can imagine a really nice use case here with having the meeting, you can have a qualification grouping uh, and then all of your fields that are filled out from your intro call or scoping call, demo calls can then go into those qualification um, custom fields. That'd be a really nice kind of, Nice way to um, capture that and make sure it feeds directly into, into your CRM. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's also the, the future that, that we see and that I think everybody wants, not needing to do a meeting at 6 p.m. and then afterwards spending half an hour noting everything down and documenting. So I think uh, getting rid of these administrative tasks, I think, is the, is the right way. Um, yeah. Because also at, at IBM, I mean, they had so much focus on doing the right notes you really had to make sure you get every detail, every key point right, because there was there was no recording, there was no transcription, there was no AI. And um, so, if you didn't have that information, you had to do an embarrassing phone call and ask again. Um, yeah. So I think that has improved. And then treating your um, pipe drive CRM as the single source of truth, I think that's just perfect because it makes sure everybody's on the same page. And um, I think DMLS can always help and provide value there. Yeah. Other CRMs are available. We just love Pipedrive. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so in, term, in terms of the integration, we've recorded a demo, so be sure that we'll put a link below to, if you just Google Demo Desk and Pipedrive, you'll, you'll find, um, you'll, you'll find uh, the demo there. So Marcel, can you tell me a little bit about yourself um, and your journey with Demo Desk? Um, obviously you said that I didn't know that you actually went to San Fran for your, um, onboarding. So a little bit of how you kind of joined Demo Desk, um, and what led to the move into product? Was it something, um, that you always aspired to, or was it a recommendation from a friend or colleague that said, Marcel, you are awesome at this. You have so many good ins like, so what kind of led to so the story into Demo Desk and then why, why the move into product? Yeah, uh, I mean it's it's quite interesting how life some sometimes turn, turns out. So I think uh, when I worked at IBM, I was mostly in in the sales area, and I also thought my career would be in in sales. I mean, I just enjoyed a lot. I think it's it's a great profession. Um, I think it sometimes sometimes gets a bad rep, but I think it's so important um, to yeah make sure prospects get the right product get the right service um and also get um this human interaction um to just make sure um it works for everybody and 
Yeah, like initially mentioned, I mean, I, I went down the entrepreneurial um, road. So I just uh, worked with a lot of friends from university, creating my own startups, my own um, companies. And oftentimes there, I uh, was always interested in, in getting things done. Um, and that typically brings you a bit more into the, the, the product uh, role. Um, and then with my last startup, uh, Manerix, um, I actually met Veronica, um, the, the CEO of, of Demodesk. And I tried to sell her uh, Manerix and she sold me on starting a Demodesk. So <laughs> I think now we know who's the better salesperson. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so... Hold on, hold on. So, so you, did you prospect Veronica so as, yeah. as someone to, um, to sell to? You're then in the meeting. How the hell does this... Did you, did you know her before? Um, so it was basically two meetings. So we first started um, prospecting uh, at Demodesk. Then we had some conversations about it, but it wasn't a fit at that time. And then Veronica pros prospected me um, afterwards. Yeah. Um, so it was actually a meeting where um, we went over there. We showed our product and services again. But then uh, the follow-up email was more like, do you want to uh, uh, work together? And so um, did, did she see something in you that you could have really good insights into product because at that time you're in sale, you're a salesperson, right? Exactly. So that's basically what, what happened. So she thought it would be a nice fit because I also have more like a technical background. So I studied um, information systems, which is a combination of business and, and computer science. Um, and also I've, I've worked in sales. I also enjoyed it quite a lot. And yeah, so she thought it, it would be a good fit. And then initially I did um, customer success and um, product for a time. And then that became a bit overwhelming. And then I focused on, on product itself. And what I love about it is basically being able to just not only understand what are the challenges and the pain points, but also being part of the solution and mm -hmm. uh, getting it to market. And I think this like full circle um, view on on things, on product and everything related. Uh, that's that's quite what, what I enjoy. And um, yeah, that's why I ended up in, in product. Well, props to Veronica, right? Because that, that is a, did, what, was there a, a CPO at the time or was this a first role? For the... That was a first role. So Veronica did product before and then they okay. decided they want to have someone full time um, dedicating their time to it. That's huge, yeah. That, that that's um, a big piece, and that probably says quite a lot about Veronica, right? And her design decisions. She wanted a salesperson at the head of product, not a, a product person that would make it pretty but not help the end user. So that that probably says something quite a lot about. I mean, can you speak to anything about that on Veronica, like as a leader, what type of leader is she? Mm. Yeah, I think you you already mentioned it quite quite nicely. So I think she has a great eye for for detail and um, knowing what she wants to achieve and how she gets there. Um, and I think that's also what was at play here, like getting someone who knows the industry, who knows the the, the job, um, and uh, also can can pull it off. And I think that's also so important just in general um, and the, being able to have that open conversation because in, in everything, right, it's always very important to have a team you trust and that you enjoy working with. And um, she is uh, really, really strong in, in enabling that. And that's why I'm still here after four years, <laughs> which in the tech space can be quite, quite a long time, but it's, uh, it's a very rewarding experience. Um, and also I enjoy so much working in the sales space because I think like there's so many smart um, motivating and also just fun people and uh, so yeah. it's a it's a it's a great industry and it's a great uh, profession yeah i think it's a really fun i think it's a really exciting time i think we're at the beginning of mar marketing technology had the last 10 to 15 years and i think sales technology has been knocking at that door and i think we're going to have the next kind of 10 years um of impact and what do i mean by that for the longest time, marketing could prove their return on investment to a business. But sales technology is very difficult, I think. Now we've got real tools that say real time, which can mean, to your point, you can really level up a sales team, which then impacts the business. Um, whereas before, marketing tools allowed you to 
very quickly get a return. Like your ROI was, we've sent this many emails, we got this back, we've sent this, mm. you know, so the, the ROI was from like a PPC standard, um, put one pound in year, four pound back, whatever it might be, right? Um, I think sales technology is now getting to a stage where we're solving real world problems for salespeople, whether that's the data collection, whether that's the following up of after a call, whether that's the, the admin notes that are being made and um, yeah, which which I, I think that the next 10 years are going to be quite interesting. And it comes back to that kind of democratization piece. I think why I'm so excited about building Evolve, easy to use sales tech for kind of smaller scaling businesses. We, we, we're basically trying to hand pick best in class um, sales technology to help businesses scale. Right now, we focus on pipe drive because we think it's a very easy to use platform for the individual user and the business owner. And then we talk to people like you because you, your platform levels up that that system, right? That and uh, it it doesn't have to be a complex task or ask, but it's it's a off the shelf systems in a nice little stack can really help small businesses, um, and that's I'm just echoing from what you, why you love what you're doing, which is why I kind of, I love what I'm doing with Evolve now. It's uh, it's really fun and having conversations with people like you is, is amazing. So thank you. <laughs> um, so myself, from my side, uh, I know we've been talking uh, for some time now. Um, this is actually our second time we're trying to record this. The first time we didn't record. Um, so this is this has been fun. The second time round as well. Um, so I've got a couple of quick fire questions, um, but you can take as long as you want to answer them. Um, what is in your sales tech stack and why? Mm. So number one is uh, demo desk, obviously, um, nice. just because I mean, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it really is part of my my day to day. Um, so I think that's a bit biased. Um, I mean, from a from an organizational standpoint, what we also use is um, I mean, we use HubSpot um, as well um, for for marketing and for the CRM, and um, I think. For us, those two pieces are already quite powerful mm. to have. And then maybe something that is not typically seen as a sales tech stack, but I think just like a notion is such a powerful combination because even though we have office space and nowadays it's hard to get people into it and with a notion and Slack, it's still easy to have this digital sales floor or like general office space where people can interact, collaborate and get things rolling. Thank you. And what's your favorite use case um, from DemoDesk that you, you've heard from a customer? So I think there's probably two answers. So I think the first answer is just um, what we've seen is organizations, um, an organization that works in a more transactional sales use case, so also an inside sales team um, in Europe. And they, and it's not as much the, the use case, but just the setup. It's beautiful to see how deeply integrated they have demo desk with Pipedrive. So they are able on the spot to tell you um, how much more conversion they have with demo desk compared to what they did before, just because no. their Pipedrive uh, setup is so powerful and so deeply connected to demo desk. And that's just beautiful to see because from a product perspective, oftentimes you enjoy also the power user use cases. So it's not a, it's not a requirement, but it's just nice to see when someone really gets every percentage out of the product and yeah. makes it really their own. Um, so I think that's that what, uh, what, what comes to mind. And then I think the just interesting use case is also that we have um, customer uh, using um, demo desk uh, uh, meeting, for example, to do e-commerce online selling. Uh, so that is a fun use case that also has happened. So they're selling motor uh, helmets uh, for motorbikes. And that's just fun to see also how different companies still interact in the, in the digital space. And is that having a a virtual meeting to demo the product. Exactly. So I, I, heard, exactly. I, I heard Rory Sutherland talk the other day and he was talking about 
the cooker taps. I don't know if you know what the, the cooker tap is. Basically, it's Q U O O K E R. It's basically like a, a a kitchen tap that has a boiling tap built into it. I don't know. He, he went to buy one, and you go online, and you go to book in a demo or, or product demonstration, and it says, you know, do you want it in person? His in person one was about 60 miles away. So then if you don't have an in-person one, you then have this um, Zoom demo demonstration of a tap. Um, and he ended up buying it based on that. But basically the, there was a, uh, <laughs> there was a, an office in Manchester that just all they did all day was take Zoom meetings, demonstrating this tap. <laughs> um, so so it's, it's a very, I'd never, I'd never heard of it before, and I've heard of it twice in a week. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's, exactly. That that's that's very exa- it's very interesting to see because also e-commerce is not something I'm I'm an expert in, yeah. but it's uh, also nice to see that they have uh, something similar that salespeople in I guess also the software space do daily, and now we see it in e-commerce. It's quite fun to just observe. Yeah. So, what would you say are the top tips for people just getting started um, using Demo Desk? And what about for the seasoned pros? Um, what what are the recommendations for the, those getting started and those that have used it before? But um, how can they sh- get more out of it? Mm-hmm. So I think getting started, the most important piece is really focusing on a smaller scope. Like what is the most meaningful change you want to achieve? What is the most meaningful um, yeah, challenge as well that you want to solve? Because sometimes we see customers getting very excited and then they want to do everything at once. But there's always also a bit of change management involved and making sure everyone in the organization and team can can follow along. So I think that's just super, super key. Getting started quickly, smaller scope, and then building on top of it organically. And that's, I think, what I would always suggest. And for the seasoned um, experts, yeah, I think they are, it's just about uh, probably making sure that they, they talk to us to really get the full out of the product because there's so many um, yeah also exciting use cases that might a customer might not have thought about. And um, I think that's where also we like to support um, personally to just um, getting these use cases um, um, done and uh, implemented uh, the right way. Nice. And from a product owner to pipe drive do you have any pipe drive feature requests that you would like to see mm-hmm. so i think typically what what we see for um uh, improvements is that we um, have the video call up extension for pipe drive so that is something that we don't have just yet um, so right now a demo list meetings in pipe drive get scheduled for through the location field um, and you cannot select it as a video conference provider and then I think the other case that we typically see is um, Pipedrive has implemented these uh, custom UI models, um, app extensions. So I think they are a great new innovation to be able to also then add information that might live in demo desk and doesn't make sense in the CM to just have still have that somewhat visible inside of Pipedrive itself. Um, and mm. then outsourcing some of these core actions um, into Pipedrive. So that's also something that we are looking into and uh, trying to understand where we could add value with that. Um, yeah, I think those are the two most common ones. Because that would be quite nice to push the coaching notes to the deal. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, that would be quite cool. In, in Into the um, into the left-hand side, yeah, that would be nice. Um, uh, do you have any reading recommendations or podcast recommendations um, that, that you think that we should be listening to or that's really impressed you recently? That's a, that's a really good point. Um, I think what, what always impresses me um, is think fast, think, think slow. I think that's just uh, the, the, the basic one. Uh, yeah, absolutely, because it just makes so much sense to, to understand your own thinking and to also avoid common uh, pitfalls. So mm-hmm. making important decisions always with a full stomach <laughs> um, and not with an empty one, for example. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that that one um, comes to mind. 
the the most and then podcast i mean i mean i'm more the reading type so i don't have as much uh, podcast uh, recommendations that's quite right so i i I think thinking fast thinking slow is is a great one from on so many levels i i think about it i got some friends um when we do we do some events and you have your remembering self and your experience and self and remembering self so um you kind of type one type two so type two would be your remembering self um and you have your kind of peak end experience right so peak emotive experience and end experience um so when it comes to uh like running a marathon people during it they they remember their experience in self is this is horrible this is horrible this is horrible then they're remembering self the day later is the peak emotive state of finishing and then they sign up again the, the next day for, for when they said just 24 hours beforehand that they would never do it again um but yeah that, that that's a remembering self and experience and self is is it, that you're basically two different people di- at different states <laughs> um absolutely so. so interesting i think that's also what everyone these days around me is trying to do a marathon <laughs> <laughs> so yeah makes a lot of sense yeah yeah um, well, Marcel, thank you so, so much. Um, is there anything else in particular you'd like to mention before we sign off today? Just to thank you, Bruce, for an amazing uh, podcast episode. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I enjoyed it a lot. And yeah. uh, thanks to the listeners. Thank you very much. Um, so that's all we've got for this week. Thank you for listening to Evolve Pipe Drive Podcast. We talk all things pipe drive, sales, apps, and pipe drive marketplace. Um, at Evolve, we're a technology consultancy based in the UK, working globally. Specifically, we, the team is put together basically to help you um, get more from Pipedrive and your wider tech stack. Um, and if you found this insightful, please do let us know what you think. Hit the comments, subscribe, and or um, message us. We do listen to all your feedback. Um, if you've got any questions, let us know. But for now, Marcel, thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce.